Hey guys, and welcome back to another Overwatch video. So I'm gonna get straight into it. BlizzCon just finished and we got a whole lot of new Overwatch 2 news to talk about. So I'm gonna condense everything into this one video, quick, fast paced, and loaded with amazing information. I hope you guys enjoy and let's get straight into it. First, we're gonna discuss how insane Blizzard is when it comes to the changes with Overwatch 2. A lot of us are dismissing it as mainly a story-based expansion or some sort of sequel like that. And while there's a huge amount of content surrounding that, Blizzard is not scared to make changes to the PvP and big changes are coming. Like PvP, the Overwatch gameplay as we know it is gonna have a huge over overhaul to the point that we did not expect. So they were discussing, first of all, every role has a passive. But before I discuss passives, I have to tell you about what they'll do to heroes. As you can see here, Reinhardt throws two fire strikes, as well as his charge being way more controlled. You can like literally drift around corners, which is absolutely insane. And they only showed us Reinhardt, but what they're trying to tease at here is that no hero is safe. Every hero can be changed. They can get more of their abilities, abilities reworked, different changes to those abilities. And specifically, they said tanks are going to be dealing a lot more damage and have a much more aggressive playstyle, which is why we saw a change to Reinhardt like that, which is kind of mind-blowing. It means the perspective we have on Overwatch 2 is a lot different than what we initially thought. Going into Overwatch 2, we can expect tons of hero changes and role changes, which leads me to the passive abilities. Every single DPS will run faster. So Genji, McCree, Tracer, it doesn't matter. If they're in the DPS category, they will move around the map faster. Every tank will be more, um, will have a greater tolerance to knockback. So like Reinhardt will not be knocked back nearly as much when Lucio boops him compared to if Lucio boops another support. And then um, the support change is one I really love. After a certain amount of time, not taking damage, if you are a support player, your health will regenerate. So it doesn't matter which support you're playing, if you're at one HP and you survive and no, nothing is dealing any more damage to you, you will regen from one HP back to full. And it's these aggressive changes that's going to bring a lot of new life and new light into Overwatch PvP. All right, while on the topic of abilities, PvE abilities are their own category. I mean, just look at these skill trees. They are endless. Every hero has three separate skill trees. And within those skill trees, depending on what you level up, it will change the abilities within the story mode. So here, Soldier's heal is actually following him. And then he can later upgrade that heal where it ends up generating a pulse, pushing away enemies. So that's insane. Like they kind of here, I mean, here literally Mercy is shooting lasers. I here she's rezzing from a distance. I, I can't really exactly explore everything. Like right here, uh, they made Junkrat shoot lightning elements. They have Reinhardt um, freezing people. They have Winston having a shock that ends up chaining to other enemies. And they kind of, they don't show everything, but they just show how expansive the skill tree truly is. And they kind of hint at the fact that you'll pick your hero and you'll focus solely on that hero throughout the campaign missions, leveling them up to get through the story, which is insane. So there is a heavy, heavy RPG element integrated into Overwatch 2 at least when it comes to their story, uh, when it comes to the story mode. So one of the maps that I'm, I'm most excited for in Overwatch 2 is our Rome map. Of course, next we're going to be talking about new confirmed maps. So other than Toronto that we that was announced last BlizzCon, we now have Rome coming to the game. And man, does it look beautiful. I am so excited for some very, very nice PvP in Italy. And I love the vision Blizzard has. And of course, they also announced New York, which looks stunning. Stunning. They really captured the New York City vibe with like pizzerias and a lot of narrow streets. And I'm really wondering how it's going to be reflect reflected in the gameplay. Will we have a lot more choke points because, you know, it's New York and a city, a lot more tunnels? I don't know. But I am so excited to see what goes on with these maps. And Blizzard, Blizzard didn't stop there. They are improving all the maps with a weather system. I do not know if this is story only, but let's say here there is a dynamic snowstorm in Toronto. I think this is going to be story only. I mean, it has to be. That would be very disruptive to PvP, but on a technical level, Overwatch has never looked more beautiful. I mean, here we have rain and reflection in Paris, and then they also show um, a lot, a lot of a much brighter Dorado, and then they continue on to show us another snowstorm. And watch this one. This one is amazing. They show off a straight 
up Sandstorm. I think it's after the clip right here and it is gorgeous and it makes me super excited to play the story and the hero missions and see where things take. They also said, let's say here there's a Sandstorm, they're going to have to approach the mission differently. So how weather actually affects the missions and the gameplay, I'm not too sure yet, but does it look amazing? It does. It looks phenomenal. I mean, you guys are seeing what I'm seeing and I guess before I continue to the next point, I want to reiterate this fact. I think Overwatch 2 is bringing a lot more to the table than people initially thought. They thought mainly a story mode. And then because we've had the Black Watch and uh, those other little seasonal events in Overwatch, maybe they thought the story mode was going to be just against basic bots and that's it. But there is a lot more to it than that. And that will finally lead us onto the next point, which I'm gonna be talking about AI and the story mode. So first of all, AI is what I was most afraid of because when we were fighting bots in Overwatch 1, let's be honest between you and me, they get boring very, very fast. But Blizzard knew that was coming. That criticism was on their way, so they thought it through. Enemy types are varied. Like this guy opens up like a flower and then has a timed explosive. They have, uh, I don't know if they're gonna have bosses, I hope so, but then they have these little chickens that they like to call them. They also have something, let's say, that will shoot a ball that will emit a fog and you have to stay away from the fog. So in the moment, you're gonna have to be dodging and shooting and you can't be mindless. Like you actually have to think while fighting. This enemy here called the Polar is a great example as to how far they'll go. We're here in a train station. They're showing a lot of uh, a lot of atmosphere. You know, the maps are a lot bigger in the story mode. Here, the puller pulls us. We get a whole cutscene of it. Maybe that puller is like a uh, boss. Not too sure, but they are really expanding, right? <laughs> There's amazing visuals on screen, and it's it's fantastic. Moving on, talking about visuals, new hero looks. We got some new ones. Last year, we got some Mercy and Reinhardt and Tracer and Lucio. These ones we got even better. They're back to the drawing board, making things even more detailed. And we get to start off with my man, McCree. And holy... He looking fine in this new outfit. Everything, of course, more HD, but the whole design is a longer beard. The um, cape is more prominent. The armor is more prominent. Just lots of detail. And they go through a lot of iterations. They're basically trying to tell the audience, us, that they are back in the drawing board or sorry back at the drawing board they're doing everything from scratch like here they also show off farah and she they said more similar but they changed her colors to be blue and white back to the overwatch original roots blue and white are the original colors they designed it that way which this is a lot more attention to the detail right it's story driven and they're thinking about the story while designing these characters right they have a more opaque shield over her mask etc etc some are more drastic like this reaper change is very drastic he has a lot more of a metallic look instead of bone white we see a lot more silver and a lot more shine in his character they tried a few like his arm is just his mask but they ended up going with armor and you can see his mask is more metallic and his gun is very shiny silver Looking completely badass. I love to see it. The final one they showed off was Widowmaker, which, okay, <laughs> that one took me by surprise because they changed it up a lot. Those were concept arts, but the final look that they went with, which is right here, is really different. Like, very different. And I guess this gives me a chance to talk about skins. What are they going to do with skins? If, let's say, the classic Widowmaker looks like this with all the other skins look the same... Will they adjust all the skins a little? Maybe they'll just go revise them, make them more HD? No idea. But the new looks are mind-blowing, and they go into a technical aspect here, which I find interesting. I don't want to bore you guys, but it's amazing. Facial expressions have been enhanced. We have a lot more physics. Like, let's say McCree will have a cape physics that actually interacts with what's going on around him. So I wonder if, let's say, there's a sandy snowstorm. Maybe McCree's cape will actually be blowing in the wind. That's what they're making it look like. And I love it. From a technical aspect, Overwatch is really being overhauled and we cannot underestimate how this will impact gameplay and the feel of the game. Now, I said AI and story um, and then I went on to the new look. I need to talk about the story a little bit more because each map will be vastly expanded for the story. Like hugely expanded. So whatever map you know now isn't just the map you'll be playing in the story. It can branch off into different areas, into cities, there's secret alleyways for the story, and everything is super expansive. But besides the map, the visuals. We know how Blizzard does their cinematics, right? We've seen their trailer, the, the very, very famous Genji vs. Hanzo trailer. 
all that, that type of technical aspects, like that type of cutscenes will be within the game itself. So when a cutscene plays, we'll see a cinematic within the game. And even while we're playing, a lot of story cutscenes will go on live. So I have an example in just a little bit. Here, they're still kind of showing you how they're developing. Like right here, right? Genji comes in to save Zenyatta, throws, and a fight commences. That's still very rough. Here we have Reinhardt charging at a bastion, and then he turns around. You can see these cinematics we're going to see within the game, right? So we're playing, mission ends, cinematic plays, next mission starts, etc, etc. So they are telling a full fleshed out story, which is just something I really, really appreciate. Here, for example, is a great way of how Blizzard will be telling us a story, right? We have Zenyatta going through his own temple, I don't know if escaping or what's going on, and we just see Widowmaker shoot through, right? Like, here's a rough concept, and then right away, once you see the finished product, it looks absolutely gorgeous. I mean, just look at this. She, she not only swoops through, but actually pushes the player back. I am so excited for this story. But yeah, that is 45 minutes of BlizzCon condensed into like, what, a 12 minute video for you guys to see everything, right? Like here, it looks like a new map, but I didn't include it in the map category because I think it's just for the story. And it just goes to show like the story alone is very expansive. Cutscenes, specific missions, skill trees, like they're working really hard. And while I thought it was mainly going to be an amazing huge story, they didn't stop, right? Like the passives to each role alone will change the game a lot. Showing the Reinhardt changes is proof of concept that they're about to change whatever they want to change. They, Jeff even mentioned if there's a game mode that they don't like from Overwatch 1, they'll just remove it for Overwatch 2. Like, two-point capture might not be in Overwatch 2. They are open to completely revising and remaking the game from, the scr from scratch, and that is fantastic. Overwatch 2 is basically just going to be a lot bigger than anyone was anticipating, and I'm excited, but let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you did enjoy the content, hit that like button, consider subscribing. As always, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.